Hello and welcome to this training on the treatment section of Provider Connect. In this section, I can review the client's treatment history, view the authorization, I can modify existing treatment, and enter new treatment services. First, let's look at the review of treatment history. In the top right hand corner, you will notice the fiscal year. I can select a different fiscal year to look at a client's history. Now Amanda is new to our agency this fiscal year, so there is no history in past years. I'm going to select the current year again and click View. Next, I can scroll through and review Amanda's treatment history. As I come down here a little further, I will see the authorization information, including the authorization number, the number of units approved, and the number of units remaining, the begin date and the expiration of that authorization. It is important to check this information to ensure there are enough units remaining before I add additional services. As I scroll down just a little bit further, I will see the payment history for the treatment billing. In the unbilled category are all of those services that have been entered but not yet submitted through the weekly billing process. Once these are submitted, they will be in one of the four categories down below, pending, awaiting payment, paid, denied, or void, meaning they have been deleted from the system. Once I have reviewed the authorization and payments, I can scroll back to the top and click Add Professional Treatment. Although I have three options available to me for data entry, I will only be reviewing the single date method. This is the preferred method by CARS to ensure treatment is entered in a timely manner per contractual requirements. I will click on the date and select my data service from the calendar. Next, I will select the funding source and then the authorization. These two items must be completed first in order for me to look up a CPT code. I just need to enter the first character or two and the CPT codes that are allowed per my funding and authorization sources will show in this list. It is important to note that some treatments are a procedure code, such as urinalysis. If I am selecting a procedure code, the units will be one. The remaining CPT codes are time-based. I will calculate the number of units using a conversion of 15 minutes per unit. If there is an exception to the rule, you will see a description here indicating 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and so on. In our first example, I will enter a procedure code of urinalysis. Next, I will select the clinician from the drop-down and the clinician's license type. The test agency pre-populates for me and because this is a procedure, I'm going to leave the unit's day at 1. I do need to scroll to the right and click on Set Treatment Date. Next. You can see that the start and end time are grayed out. I do need to enter in the duration. We're going to say that it took seven minutes to complete the UA. And then I'm going to select the location where the service occurred. And this was in the office. The primary diagnosis will be listed here if it has already been entered into Avatar or Provider Connect. I can also reference it here as well. 
Next, I need to indicate the private pay amount. This would be money that has been collected from an insurance company such as Blue Cross Blue Shield or from the client in a self-pay amount. If this does not apply to the client, enter zero. And Provider Connect will automatically calculate the billed amount. I need to document my service. So, in this particular case, I'm going to say this was a random UA, and then I will click Add Treatment. I will acknowledge the pop-ups, and I am back at the Enter Treatment screen. I can then enter new treatment services. However, I want to look at that new service that we just entered. To do so, I'm going to click on Treatment, and I will see here on 729, I have that new service code that was entered in my UA. One unit, duration of seven minutes, it has not been reviewed yet for billing, and that expected disbursement is five dollars. Let's enter two more services to view the differences between a procedure and a time base code and to view the difference between an individual therapy and a group therapy code. Again, I will click on Add Professional Treatment. I want to use the single date. I will select the date from the calendar, select my funding source, my authorization, enter in the first few characters of my procedure code, this time I will select individual service. I will then select the clinician, the license, and because this is a time-based code and I have met with the client for an hour-long individual, I will change this to four units, so four 15-minute units for a total of 60 minutes. I then need to scroll just a little bit to click on set treatment date. In this next one, you see that my start time and my end time are now available for me to enter information. I'm going to say that this took place from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And when I enter my end date, Provider Connect automatically calculates the duration based off of my start and end times. I need to select my location. If the primary diagnosis is already in the system, it will be reflected here. I need to indicate my private pay amount. If not applicable, enter zero. And once I have completed my note, I would click Add Treatments. Acknowledge my pop-ups and I can then enter new service. We're going to take a look at that third example which is the group therapy. So I'm going to go ahead and change my date and then because my selections are already made for the funding source and the authorization I can select the first few letters. This time I'm going to select group, select my clinician, the license type. Now I'm going to say group was two hours in length, so at 15 minutes per unit that would be eight units of group. I will then scroll and click set treatment date. Once I do so, I need to enter in the start time and the end time just like I did with the individual. So I'm going to say that this took place from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. It calculates it at 120 minutes. I need to select the location. And then I need to enter in the number of clients in group, the number of counselors, and the time it took me to document this group service. These fields documenting the group are required in order to ensure the group services meet the counselor to client ratio requirement for group billing. Next, I can address the primary diagnosis, enter in my private pay amount, 
enter in my group note and click Add Treatment. I can then click Treatment to return to the cover page of that client's treatment history. If I have made a mistake with one of the services that I have entered, I have the ability to edit the service. I would click Edit and when I do so, I can change the physician, license, and the number of units. However, I cannot change the procedure code or the data service. If those are in error, I would need to delete the service and start over. If these are not the issue with the service, I can continue to the next section, and I can also edit the duration and the location of the service as well. Once I have done that, I would click Update Treatment to save my changes. Again, if it was something with the service code or the date of service that was an error, I would use Delete to delete that service, acknowledge the pop-ups, and then I would use the Add Professional Treatment to re-enter the correct service. And that completes our overview of the treatment services.